What's up, everybody? Dr. J.P. Gidry here. Uh, I just want to hop on, uh, do a little live here today and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the healthcare system and where it's at and, uh, you know, where I'm trying to kind of change, you know, with what I can, um, how, how healthcare is approached, I guess. Um, you know, I watched a great video from, uh, his, his internet handle is Z dog MD, MD, uh, I honestly don't even know what his uh, real name is, but he's obviously a, a medical doctor um, kind of discussing this and, and, and the issues with COVID-19 and kind of what if it's, it's exposing with the issues in the healthcare system. Um, you know, t- two years ago, I started my move out of the traditional healthcare system. Uh, I owned an insurance based outpatient physical therapy facility uh, for about seven, eight years. And, you know, I was growing tired of having to feel like I was kind of serving the system and serving the insurances and serving the doctors over uh, serving my patients first uh, to, to get by and to try to make a living. Um, you know, and I was at a point where I was kind of questioning myself uh, as a person, as a clinician, as a business owner, you know, of what I was doing was right and what I wanted to be doing. Um, you know, around that time I went through a divorce, which kind of, you know, essentially made my decision, that decision that had been weighing in my head uh, a little easier uh, is it kind of, you know, it just mentally and emotionally exhausted me and I didn't have the capacity to, to uh, deliver as a business owner, as a clinician, as I should. So um, about two years ago, I stepped away from that clinic and decided to make a go at being more on the the front lines of things uh, from the fitness performance standpoint and now getting back into physical therapy from the telehealth standpoint, but having a different approach to it than our normal kind of three, two to three visits a week um, insurance based approach. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the details of that as we get into this. So, so why am I telling you all this? Well, the reality is, is our healthcare system rewards quantity over quality. So delivering more health care is how you make more money. Uh, even though we know uh, through studies, through experience, that more health care actually leads to um, poorer outcomes. Um, you know, and there's a couple great, great quotes from the video um, from Z-Dog MD uh, that really kind of hit home. Uh, one of them is, uh, if you want to improve a healthcare system, then we should be delivering less healthcare. You know, that's our fix for that system is find the way to deliver less healthcare, not more. Um, you know, and the second one is if you want to live a long, healthy life, then your goal should be able to be to stay out of the healthcare system. Um, you know, our healthcare system has a lot of great things it does. Um, you know, when it comes to life-saving procedures, when it comes to, you know, even elective surgeries and things like that, you know, um, you know, we're very good in those areas. Um, but when it comes to truly uh, maximizing people's health and getting quality results and outcomes, uh, we're not very good at that. Um, you know, you can look at something like back pain, for example, that, uh, you know, we don't have very good outcomes for chronic and persistent back pain. Uh, what, and, and that's whether that's physical therapy, whether that's surgery, whether that's pain management, whatever that may be. So, you know, what my goal is, you know, where I'm trying to move towards is, uh, I'm trying to get to the front lines of healthcare and to educate and to, uh, motivate people and change people's approach to their health and well-being. Um, my goal is to help people avoid the system altogether, or at the very least minimize their involvement in it. Um, you know, and then I can do this and the way we, this is done is by helping you take control of your health, by helping you build healthy habits and not relying on the system to bail you out. Um, and this is through, you know, building, you know, consistent habits of exercise, building consistent habits around healthy nutrition, um, this is a uh, daily activity. So outside of kind of, you know, three days a week of, you know, resistance training every day, doing something active. And that could be walking, running, swimming, biking, hiking, playing a sport, playing with your kids, gardening, whatever that may be. But, 
you know, getting out from in front of the TV and out in front of the screens and uh, participate in activity. Um, and, and this is kind of my driver behind this becoming a lifelong athlete movement and, and system that I'm trying to put together that I'm currently uh, building. Um, you know, and so uh, the goal of that is to make everyone lifelong athletes, whether you participate in sports or not. You know, I still have a belief that we're all athletes and approaching life that way uh, will will uh, improve all areas of our health and well-being, mental, physical, emotional, and then improve our function and quality of life. So what, what does being a lifelong athlete mean? You know, to me, it's more about just being able to participate and excel in sports, although that's a lot of what I do as well. You know, there's plenty of clients I work with where their sole goal is to get better at, at a particular sport. Um, but for me, it means being physically and ready for anything at any age. So ready to lift, ready to sprint, ready to jump, throw, carry, get up and down from the ground, fight, defend yourself, live, you know, garden, function, play with your kids, travel, whatever that may be. You know, having that readiness to do that and having the resiliency to be able to withstand uh, the stressors of day to day life. Um you know, both physically, mentally, mentally, and emotionally. And, and, you know, some of these areas I don't get too deep in, you know, but definitely I can make recommendations or guidance towards other professionals in those other areas, whether it's, you know, a registered dietitian, um, you know, if you're diabetic or heart disease, or you have some, some true medical issues that need to be addressed, whether that's a medical doctor um, to make sure you're on the right medications and, and the right, uh, changes with that because those things are still needed to a degree and and that may be a mental health professional as well um and even you know from a financial standpoint uh you know finding a good financial planner you know uh this is something i talked with on a on my podcast episode with a guy named will butler who's a uh was a physical therapist turned uh you know financial advisor um the the, the idea of financial wealth and where that plays a part in lifelong athlete so you know, whether you play a sport, still play a sport, never played a sport, I still think we're all lifelong athletes, you know. And as we age, you know, Coach Dan John has this great saying that we're all aging athletes. You know, as we age, we lose our ability to perform activities, or we can. We lose strength, we lose muscle mass, we lose mobility, we lose bone density. But we don't have to just accept that as a normal part of aging. You know, it's the same thing with arthritis, this diagnosis of arthritis. You know, all of that is is the aging of our joints. The symptomology from it doesn't necessarily have to be accepted as a guarantee. Um, so how can we approach these things? Well, if we're still in our quote unquote prime. So let's say, you know, that 18 to 35 year old range. Well, we can set ourselves and prepare for the future by taking care of ourselves and building those habits so that when we get outside of that prime and those aging processes start to happen more rapidly, We've already built a base. We've extended that prime um, and we've slowed that decline. Even if we're getting started outside of that prime, um, we still can reverse some of those changes and slow that decline of aging and, and rebuild function and strength and uh, quality of life uh, at any age. You know, there's tons of examples of this, of, of people in their 70s and 80s picking up running or powerlifting and things like that and, and excelling in it. Um, you know, and so this is really what becoming a lifelong athlete is all about. You know, it's up to us to take control of our physical and mental well-being, you know, not only for the immediate present, for, but for the future as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's going to do two things. It's going to, personally, it's going to help us live longer, healthier, more active, more effective lives. Secondly, it's going to take some of the stress off the healthcare system that we, you know, we are seeing, you know, uh, as we undergo this, this uh, COVID-19, you know, issue uh, of the healthcare system being overwhelmed. Um, you know, there's things that we can control. This is something that's out of our control to a degree. But, you know, things like heart disease and diabetes and, you know, uh, type 2 diabetes and certain cancers and obesity, uh, these are all things that can be controlled through our decision making and through our habits. Um, you know, it doesn't mean they're easy to do. 
Um, and there's other factors that play a part into predetermining those things, uh, regardless of lifestyle, such as genetics. Um, but we still have some control over those things. And the less we rely on the healthcare system to keep us healthy, the better off we're going to be. You know, it's still there and it still can provide a lot of good services and a lot of needed services to people. Um, but, you know, we've gotten to a point where we just rely on that and take no responsibility for our own health. Um, so, you know, my goal is to keep everyone young and healthy and resilient and functionally and maintain quality of life, you know, well into the years as well as qual as quantity um, and, and keep you out of that healthcare system. So, you know, if, if you want to learn more about what I'm doing in this lifelong athlete movement, you know, definitely feel free to comment below, direct message me. Um, email me at johnpaul at gitrypt.com. Uh, and let's just talk a little bit about what your fitness goals are, what some of your things you struggle with, and maybe how I can be of help to you. Uh, if not me, you know, maybe I can find someone who is the right fit for you. Um, but, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of changes in the healthcare system when, when all this dies down, you know, and it's going to face a lot of scrutiny um, for a lot of reasons. But, you know, uh, I, th I hope, you know, maybe this is just me hoping the, the tragedy and the negativity of all this, the silver lining will be that maybe this will open people's eyes to the importance of taking control of their own health care and own well-being, um, uh, you know, because A, this virus isn't just going to magically go away and B, there's going to be other things that come along, um, you know, potentially, in a, you know, in a lifetime, if not the next. And so, you know, I think we just need to change our approach to health care. Um, uh, for that reason, um, you know, and, and use a system for the necessities, um, but take control of what we can control. So hope everybody has a good week. Great start. Great Monday. Um, and uh, please reach out with any questions.